welcome to round two. We have I See You Everywhere by Julia the Glass. This just has reviews on the back cover. I hate that. Uh, so I don't actually know what it's about, but I'm going to assume since the cover looked cool that there's a hope and a chance that maybe it is cool or in, at least interesting in some capacity. Uh, Julian Barnes, The Sense of an Ending. Um, this one says it is about Tony Webster, a middle-aged man, as he contends with the past he never thought much about until his closest childhood friends return with a vengeance. One of them from the grave, another from the maddening present. Uh, Tony thought he had left this all behind as he built a life for himself and a career that provided him with a secure retirement and an amicable relationship with his ex-wife and daughter. Hi. What? It's cat eruption time. So anyway, <laughs> uh, but when he is presented with a mysterious legacy, he is forced to revise his estimation of his own nature in place of the world. Uh, it's not... It's not a huge book. It uh, has beautiful deckled edges. Uh, sounds pretty interesting. He's still talking. So if you hear him, I'm just going to keep plowing. <laughs> uh, Zadie Smith's On Beauty. I remember when this was out. <laughs> All right. Back to it. Um, this is Zadie Smith's On Beauty. I remember when this was out, When I, I think in grad school. Um, Let's find out. Or not. Maybe I'm just insane. When would I have seen this? I was oblivious in 2005, so I'm not sure. Uh, but I remember I really enjoyed the cover, and I wanted to have it in... Oh, I moved my bookshelf, but there used to be another copy of her books here. Um, so, let's, let's see how it is. I know I heard that one was good, so I went for it. Um, next one, it's a penguin. Yes. It has a reader's guide and sign. And sign. And sign? Ugh, whatever. It's really late. I do need to learn to not film these when I'm almost three quarters of the way asleep and after a really long work day. Uh, Benny and Shrimp. Um, it says it was offbeat, charming, and fun, and seriously addictive. This is by uh, Katarina Mazzetti. I don't know anything about this one. It started in a cemetery where they begrudgingly share a bench. Shrimp, the childish young widow and librarian with a sharp intellect, in a home so tidy that her jam jars are in alphabetical order, meets Benny, the gentle, overworked milk farmer who fears becoming the village's old bachelor. Both driven by enormous longing and a loudly ticking biological clock, they can't escape the powerful attraction between them. But how will she learn to accept that he falls asleep at the opera and has a house full of his mother's cross stitch? And how could he ever feel at home in her minimalist apartment bare as a dentist's waiting room? <laughs> um, I do think that sounds cute. I really like the cover. And pretty much any Penguin book, I'm just like, gimme. So I went for it. Uh, this one is really interesting. The true story of Hansel and Gretel, um, a novel of war and survival. Uh, Louise Murphy wrote it again, another Penguin book. Um, where essentially, what was it, the last months of the Nazi occupation of Poland, two children are left by their father and stepmother to find safety in a dense forest. Because their real names will reveal their Jewishness, they are renamed Hansel and Gretel. They wander in the woods until they are taken in by Magda, an eccentric and stubborn old woman called Witch by the nearby villagers. Magda is determined to save them even as a German officer arrives in the village with his own plans for the children. Um, that sounds good. So I shall, I shall enjoy reading that one. I like the history, you know, I've read, um, a lot in that genre, so I thought that sounded interesting. Uh, Teta Mother and Me, Three Generations of Arab Women, um, by Jean said, uh, my, is that a D or an O? Bad typography. <laughs> I think it's Bacosi. I can't tell. If that's pronounced wrong, I apologize. Uh, this just sounded interesting, and you guys all know I love generational stories, so I was like, come, come into my, my bag and let me take you home. 
Uh, found this in the history one. It is the metal, <laughs> the history one, the history aisle, I guess would be a better explanation of where I found this, um, since that was rather vague. Um, the metaphysical club of, this sounded awesome. It's a story of ideas in America. Uh, and in design, I talk a lot about, you know, where do ideas come from? How do we generate them? How do we get from point A to point Z, so to speak, or, and beyond? More importantly, you know, how do we get to where we're going or where we want to be. Uh, so I, I could not resist. Um, the Lido Bundle by Marina Warner. What a weird background. It looks like fabric of some sort. Um, so when a mummy in the Museum of Albion is unpacked and it is found to contain a bundle of curious objects and documents, uh, the tell of the wanderings of an unknown woman, Lido. So that's not the typography is tiny. It looks like it's eight points, so it's going to be an interesting read. Good thing I got the glasses. <laughs> um, but that one sounded very interesting. I don't know if I have a copy of this or not. I know I had it on my Amazon wish list at one point, and I've already talked about her because she was in, I think, my Curious Iguana haul. I'm pretty sure the one before that, but I think that was the one, the Curious Iguana. Um, this is The Shoemaker's Wife. I don't think I have it. <laughs> if I do, it's only a dollar and then I'll just give it to someone else. Um, I just remember really loving the cover. So I'm just going to be, what's the word? <laughs> shallow. I'm going to shallow and be like, it's pretty. Um, but look at that spine. It's gorgeous. Um, so let's read it. And even the back's pretty. It's just a really pretty book. Look at this. Um, that's, that's a beautiful end sheet. Uh, let's see. The majestic and haunting beauty of the Italian Alps at the turn of the 20th century is the setting for the first meeting of Ensa and Ciro who meet as teenagers despite growing up in villages just a few miles apart. Uh, when Ciro catches the local priest in a scandal, he is banished from his village and sent to hide in America as apprentice shoemaker in Little Italy. Without explanation, he leaves the bereft Enza behind Soon ends as family faces disaster and she too is forced to go to America with her father to secure their future. So that sounds really good. This actually will probably be one of the first ones I read and first, before I do that, I'll find out if I have another copy or not. If not, that's a gorgeous hardback. I like it. Um, Wodehouse, how right you are, Jeeves. I'm actually going to talk about this later, probably within a month. Um, I have a sort of addendum on all of these. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to talk about that later. Oh, look, another Austin. So this is the true Darcy spirit, um, by the author of Mr. Darcy's Daughters. This is by Elizabeth Anson. It's either going to be awesome or it's going to suck. Let's gamble. Woo -hoo! We're getting, we're getting down. I only have like two, four, six, eight. We're down to eight. Um, Lisa Wingate's Drenched in Light, again, I liked that cover. Once gifted, oh yeah, I remember this one. Once a gifted ballet dancer, Julia Costell buckled under the demands of a professional dance career and has landed with a thud in an unglamorous job as a guidance counselor at a performing arts high school. Living back home with her parents and feeling lost, she's afraid she'll never soar again until one day, young Del Jordan is sent to her office carrying an essay. In Dell's writing, Julia sees luminous sparks of hope, but as she fights to forge a brighter future for one of her disadvantaged students, she is drawn into startling undercurrents of conflict and denial within the academy. Only when she is tested in ways she never could have imagined does she begin to discover where real meaning and fulfillment lie and realize that even though her life has seemed off course, she has been on the right path all along. I like ballet. And I like performing arts high school. I was obsessed with fame growing up. So I'm, I'm guessing that's probably why I picked those two up. I'm kind of a sucker for those. Speaking of, here's another one I'm sucker for. Um, South is Superior. Uh, I just, it was cute. And it's Superior, Lake Superior, uh, off Michigan's Upper Peninsula. A uh, beautiful, hard scrabble town that, despite its isolation and wilderness, has a magic that captures a certain kind of person and never lets go. In this town comes Madeline Stone, who is running away from her old life, um, who is running, I can't read today, who is more running, that feels 
feels structurally awkward. More running away from her old life than, okay, I guess it makes sense now, uh, she is consciously running towards anything. But when she arrives to care for an aging family friend, she finds herself pulled into the world this town and her own life has changed forever. Uh, it reminded me of, oh, Whistling, what was that? Whistling and Dix, Whistling Dixie in a nor'easter. It sounded similar in style that, which I never got the sequel to that yet. Wonder why. Oh well, I'll work on that this fall. Um, I just loved this edition of the Prince of Machiavelli. A uh, dollar. I know. I guess it was hardback. I wonder if they gave this to me as hardback or not. Well, anyway, a dollar too. I I liked that edition. Um, the Basilica. Yeah, The Splendor and the Scandal, The Building of St. Peter's by R.A. Scotty. Uh, this I will probably mostly use in my art history classes. And I think it was illustrated. Maybe not. Maybe I'm crazy. No, there's pictures. There it is. Oh, look at that. I should probably show you. I got enthralled that quickly and forgot I was talking to a camera. Um, so many pictures in the middle. And it just talks about the, the hows it was built and whys and all that. Um, similar sort of historical vein paper. Uh, I'm just going to hold it there and then I'll write right here the author's name. I'm, I'm just not even, I'm just, I'm just not even. Um, but this sounds really interesting. Um, so in the town of the frontiers of Central Asia, an ambitious scribe feverishly dreams of writing his masterpiece, but before he begin, he must find the perfect paper, a paper unbelievably beautiful and pure as the mountain snow. Um, so it's a sort of quest for that and a little history behind it. I, and oh, it has one of these and I love these. Let me find it. There we go. We have the bookmark and sides. I love books like that. It's just like that one extra little detail that just makes it so pretty and precious. Um, this one, I'll have to work to take the plastic off. This is one of their discards, and that was what was interesting also, as well as the fantastic prices and the delicious selection. Um, they also went through and did their discard pile, so I'm not a fan of that cover, so we'll work on that. Um, this is, sorry, as, be ugh, as above, so below. Uh, this is a novel of Peter Bruegel. Uh, and if you studied art, art history, there was, you know, the, the elder and, you know, the junior, all that. <sighs> I'm so tired. I'm not, I'm not even sure that made sense. Anyway, it's by Rudy Rucker. Um, each chapter is, I'll do it this way so you can see, um, or at least get the idea. Each chapter is sort of a story based on one of Bruegel's paintings. And I thought that was really interesting. This will probably be just be one of those that I take to work also and read through. I'll probably just, I'll probably, that's probably one of my second or third books because I like Bruegel's work. Uh, if you live near a museum, check out and see if you have any of his work. They're really interesting and the details are just so intricate uh, and the stories and I think that's what I liked about that that they wrote a story about the stories and the paintings. So it's like, ah, it's about time. Um, Out of the Flames. This is by Lawrence and Nancy Goldstone. This was a really interesting sounding book. Um, da, 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 da. Both a scientist and free thinking Thelegian. I hope I said that right. Um, Michael Servetus is credited with the discovery of pulmonary circulation in the human body as well as the authorship of a polemical masterpiece that cost him his life. Um, and the Christianity, who, whatever the next word is, sorry, I'm not even going to try it. I'm too tired for fancy words today. <laughs> um, a heretic work of biblical scholarship written in 1553, aimed to refute the orthodox Christianity uh, of his old colleague John, Cal John Calvin supported. Uh, after the book spread through the ranks of the Protestant hierarchy, uh, Servetus was tried and agonizingly burned at the stake, and the last known copy of the Resticutio, God, that's probably not anywhere close, chained to his leg. But three copies did manage to, to survive, and this is about those. Um, so it tracks the world, or the work's history, examining his life and times of the politics, uh, etc, etc, etc. I have a 
tendency to collect anything about sort of the Calvinist era. I'm very interested in that, so sort of be interesting to see about that. And it's getting really late, so let's do the last one. And then we can all go to bed or to work or to lunch or whatever it is we're doing. This is one of those books I'm not sure if I have a copy of not. I need to really reorganize my to be read pile because there's a couple books that I look at and I go, oh, I really want that, but I can't remember. I mean, I've looked at them so many times in the store and read them. I think that sometimes I get confused and I think I have them and I don't. And this is one of them. This is Venetia Kelly's Traveling Show by Frank Delaney. I really enjoy Delaney's works. I think he wrote Ireland. Yep. Ireland. Ireland. Um, same as the other one. I'll have to take it out of this little plastic wrap thing because it is the discard, but I couldn't resist it. Um, I'll just read the first paragraph and then I'm going to crash. Um, she sprang from the womb and waved the crowd. Then she smiled and took a bow. And so we first meet Venetia Kelly, the beguiling actress at the center of this new spellbinding epic novel by Frank Delaney. Um, I just remember I was in a store reading. I always like to read a little bit before I get it. I think I read the first chapter and it just sucked me in. Um, so if I have a copy, oh well. If not, then it's going to be the same thing as the other. I will just give it to a friend. Alright, we did it. We got through the Gettysburg pile and now I can organize them on my shelf. They've just been sort of sitting here. Oh, I just saw one. One more, it fell. Yates is dead. Oh my god! Um, this one was just really cool. Um, at least one pound will be paid to Amnesty National or International for every book sold. Um, all these authors wrote one chapter each and they sort of continued the story through and I thought that was awesome. Now we're done. Whew. Okay, we survived. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, let me know in the comments below if you have read any of them or recommend that I read them first or go, ooh, don't read that one yet. Because um, I don't know, maybe I picked up some duds. Who knows? But great prices, I'll gamble. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Where's your sleeve on?